In today's Whiteboard Leadership Conversation, I want to talk about making the most of big days. Every church has big days during the year. Sometimes it's the start of school or Christmas or Thanksgiving or Easter. Maybe it's Mother's Day, other times of the year that are just big. Uh, grand openings, uh, uh, maybe opening a new venue. All these big days are opportunities to, to catch the wave of what God is doing and invite people to join in with your church and, and hopefully uh, boost attendance, boost involvement, and boost everything else that's in the life of the church. Uh, here's a few things to think about as you approach a big day. The first is this, as you think through the programming, make sure they see normal. Uh, a whole lot of churches, when they're looking at a big day, they'll bring in a, a guest band, a guest speaker, they'll have bouncies all over the place for the kids and do all these extra things that make that weekend unique and special. And in reality, people are looking for the norm. And if you go and have all these different things on a, on a big day, and the following week this guest shows up and they don't have balances and the band isn't as good and the speaker isn't what they thought, it's just not a good scenario. I, I know one time at my church, we had Kurt Warner, the former quarterback for the Arizona Cardinals come in. And even though we had him speaking, we told him, we're not gonna let you speak on your own. I'm gonna interview you so that people could get to know me as well as they got to know him. And so he drew them in, but then they got to know my heart. And our other pastor, Chad, actually gave a gospel presentation, so they got to know Chad as well. So when they came back the next week, they saw Chad and I on the stage, and it made sense to them, and it was comfortable, and it was normal. We had normal children's ministry those weeks as well. And, and so people didn't have high expectations and low experience. That's what disappointment is, by the way. When your expectations don't reach your, uh, meet your experience, that's always disappointment. You don't want to disappoint people. So, so let them see normal as best you can. Make sure that normal is high quality though. S second thought, uh, think through connection and comeback. Think through uh, what would get them to actually connect with the church or connect with my organization or co come back. And by the way, the number one reason people come back to a service is they are asked to come back to the service. So why don't you just get up there and say, hey, I want you to come back next week or two weeks from now and, and give them a reason to come back. Uh, maybe if it's a special weekend like Easter or Christmas, uh, maybe you do uh, pictures out in front of the, in the lobby and then say, listen, uh, we're not gonna send you these pictures. They'll be on our Facebook page. You have to like our Facebook page and then they become your Facebook friends and now they're connected to you in some way, shape or form through social media. But you figure out different ways to connect them, to get them to come back. Maybe there's a seminar that's a follow-up to the, the series that you're in. And yes, and we come to the seminar, but you're trying to find ways to get them to come back for an, another time. Uh, that's part of the really the, what I call the three wave theory. Here's what I figured out. Uh, once people attend my church three or more times in a six week span, they consider it their church. They're thinking that wasn't so bad. And so what we would try to do, uh, like if we had Christmas week, then two weeks before Christmas, we would have a major event and uh, we would invite people to come to that. And we'd use that event to bolster up Christmas and then Christmas numbers would be really high. We'd ask people to come back to the series that's starting in January and those numbers would be high as well. And so we use these three waves, a big day, Christmas and another day or a big uh, interview or something before Easter, then Easter, then uh, Mother's Day. We would use that as a three wave theory to try to create these waves that turn actually into, into tides. And once people come three or four times, they consider that their home church and they're much more likely to come back because they've experienced it several times in a row and the excellence and the focus on God's word, all those things have really helped them to say, I, I, could, I could be a part of this church. The final thing to mention is just something I, I, uh, I probably should have put first, but, but if you wanna have big days, uh, you can't just be the one inviting. Everyone has to learn how to invite. And there are other, other whiteboard vi uh, videos you can look at to talk about having an evangelistic culture. I encourage you to take a look at those. But if we can empower our people with, with tools like invitations or digital invitations or social media or uh, just, just praying through who they might invite, all those things would help us empower our people to invite and make the most of these big waves. My prayer is that God will turn these waves into tides. And not just would you have a great weekend, but you'd have a great experience as your church grows in helping people meet, know, and follow Jesus. This has been a Converge Whiteboard Leadership Moment. To learn more about Converge or to join us, check out converge.org.